Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on using the Create Time Series dialog in SPSS. Oftentimes in counseling research, we are studying variables that change over time. So it's repeated measures. And we're measuring the same sample. And we want to be able to analyze these data and create new variables that are functions of these data. So taking a look at these fictitious data I have loaded in the data view here in SPSS. Assuming I'm working with the same sample, we have week 1 through 25. And then here in the symptoms variable, we have symptoms count. So this is the number of reported symptoms for this particular sample, uh, in this case for week 1, 44, uh, week 2, 40, and so on. So the Create Time Series dialog allows us to create several different types of functions based on this symptoms variable. Go to Transform, then Create Time Series, and we can see this is what the Create Time Series dialog looks like by default. So you have the variables here to the left, and this variable to new name list box here to the right, and the name and function area down here on the bottom right. So let's first take a look at symptoms. We're going to move that over. And you can see by default it's going to use the function difference and the order is going to be set to 1. So I'm just going to run what it has by default and show you how this works. You can see 24 valid cases, 25 weeks are in the study. So I'll show you why it did that. So you can see it's calculating the difference here, in this case, between the week one value on symptoms and the week two value. In this case, it dropped by four reported symptoms, so it's going to be negative four. It increased by four to week three, and that's where we have the four. It increased by 11 to week four, and, the and that's why we have 11. So this is off by one row. Okay, that's the order was set to one. So if I go back into the same dialog, I'm going to highlight this and edit it. I'm going to change the order to two. And it's important here to select change, to click change. Uh, otherwise, it's going to run the same analysis again. Now, this is going to overwrite the variable I already have, but that's okay. I'm going to click OK, and it's going to warn me. Uh, it's going to ask me here, do I want to change the existing variable? And click OK. Now you can see the number of valid cases dropped to 23, even though I still have the same 25 weeks. And that's because now the calculation is based on the order being set to 2 instead of 1. So with the order set at 2, it's going to make these calculations differently than it did for the order set at 1. So we can see that the first two weeks, there's no value for the newly created variable. And for week three, the value is 8. So you have from week one to week two, it drops by 4, and then increases by 4 from week two to week three, so you have 8. Here at week four, you see it increased by 4 from week two to three, and then increased by 11, and that's where you get a difference there of 7. Looking here at week 5, if we go back to week 3 and look at week 4, it goes up by 11, then down by 19. So that difference is recorded as negative 30, and so on. So moving back to create time series, so transform, create time series. This is the difference function, but there's also a variety of other functions here. Now let's take a look at cumulative sum. So again, I'm going to leave the same new variable name and click change. Notice for cumulative sum, there are no order or span options. You can't fill those in. I'll click OK. Again, I'm going to overwrite the existing variable. Here you can see I have 25 valid cases. And cumulative sum is 
what you might expect. You have the sum of the symptoms count and it's cumulative as we move through the week. So uh, for week one it's 44, for week two it's 40 plus 44, 84, and then week three 128 which is 44 plus 40 plus 44 and so on. Using the cumulative sum variable like this would be popular if we're trying to create a line chart. So for example, going to graphs, chart builder, we go down to line here and move over the simple line chart. Uh, time would be the x-axis here, so week would go along the x-axis, and then the cumulative sum would go on the y-axis. Then I click OK, and you can see you have a line graph here that charts the cumulative number of symptoms over the weeks of the study. Moving back to the data view and transform create time series, there are two other functions I want to demonstrate here. Of course available you have a difference which I've covered and cumulative sum. Also uh, two types of moving average, there's a seasonal difference and running medians. At the end there's smoothing but I want to cover lag and lead. So let's first start with lag and I'm going to leave the order at one and I'm going to use the same name I had before. Click change. So this is now set to create a new variable with a lag of one. So I click OK. I'm going to change the existing variable. It's going to let me know I have 24 valid cases and that's because what this does is returns the value from the week behind. So at week two you have 44 and week three you have 40, week three 44 and so on. So it's going to be one week behind. If I go back in, highlight this uh, variable up here and I change the lag to say 3 and then remember to click change here to update this. And click OK, overwrite the current variable. You can see now it returns the value from three weeks behind. There's the 44, there's the 40, and so on down the line. So lead is similar except it works in the opposite direction. So I go back in create time series. Now I want to change it to lead and let's lead uh, leaving the order set to three here. Again click change and then click OK and you'll see 22 valid cases. So you can see now with the new lead variable that the value in record one matches week four. So it's leading, it's three weeks ahead. Uh, record two equals week five. And that's why when you get down to the end, it stops at 22, because that's giving you the value from week 25, three weeks ahead. So the lag and lead function is very similar. They just operate in a different direction. I hope you found this video on using the Create Time Series dialog in SPSS to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.